Welcome my friends, I'm Dean, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the top 8 things that we need to know about the workbench in Outer Worlds. We're going to start off with some inventory management. Next we'll see a general overview of the workbench and work our way up from there to how to use the workbench to get the most out of your weapons and armor. So, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned player, stay tuned because I'm sure there's some useful information in this video that you might not have known. I wonder what secrets these ruins contain. Exploring some ruins, killing some monsters. All we're missing is theme music. When you return to your ship or visit a vendor or vending machine after adventuring, your inventory may look like this. As you were killing, looting, and stealing, any weapons or armor or items that you picked up were added to your inventory in the order that you picked them up. This can make it quite confusing on trying to figure out what's what. For me, it helps to organize my inventory before I break items down, access a vendor, vending machine, or even the workbench. By organizing your inventory, it makes it quicker and easier to navigate through those menus. To organize your inventory, use this command to choose the best option for the situation. As an example, say you're ready to break down or sell some unwanted items. Press this command and choose Value. By doing so, it will organize your items from most expensive to the cheapest. Now you can easily see what you may want to break down, sell, or keep. As we can see here, the last item in the menu is the cheapest, while the first item in the menu is the most expensive. Now to make this even easier, press and hold this command to flip or reverse this sort type. Now the items are listed from cheapest to the most expensive. And this works the same way with all sort types. There are six to choose from. If we press this action again, we can filter through the six different ways that you can sort your menu. Now starting at value, the next one would be weight. After weight would be value to weight. The next one is damage rating. Now this one's excellent with the weapons because it can really help you decide what weapon is the best in damage. Next is melee ranged. And finally, the last one is named. You can also organize and sort all seven categories in the menu. Starting with weapons, armor, consumables, modifications, general, quests, and junk. You can also do all of this in the menu of a vending machine, vendor, and even the workbench. When we access the workbench, we can see that it has four key functions. Each function is related to weapons and armor only. These four functions are modify, tinker, repair, and breakdown. When you use any one of these four functions, on the right hand side of the menu, you'll be able to see some useful information on what action you're about ready to perform and the result of the action all before you do it. The workbench is pretty easy to navigate, but each function is a bit more complex. So let's break down. <laughs> OK, I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. Uh, let's take a closer look at each one of these functions in more detail. Sure thing. They come. Sometimes violence is the only way. As you play the game, or more to the point, engage in combat, your weapons and armor will degrade. The more you use a weapon or get hit by enemy damage, the more these items degrade. As the durability of the weapons and armor drop, the less useful they'll become. For weapons, they'll do less damage. For armor, the protection or armor rating will drop. So it's very important to keep your equipment well maintained. To do that, you'll need parts. Parts can be obtained from breaking weapons or armor down. There's only two different kinds. 
you have weapon parts and armor parts. Weapon parts are needed to repair and maintain all the different types of weapons in the game. Doesn't matter what it is. Melee, machine guns, rifles, and pistols. Also, you'll need armor parts to repair and maintain all of your armor. Once again, it doesn't matter. All body armor and head armor. Nothing else is needed but parts to repair and maintain your equipment. Weapon and armor parts can also be obtained in the open world. They're in containers, dead bodies, and just generally laying around on the ground. But the quickest and easiest way to get parts is to break weapons and armor down that you've scavenged while you were out playing. In the right hand side of our menu, we can see how many of the parts we have, how many parts we'll get if we break this weapon down, and then the total of all parts after we've completed the action. You can also do this in your inventory. There's no level requirement or skill cap. You can break these items down at any level. But if you'll increase your engineering skill, it'll reduce the amount of weapon and armor parts needed to repair your equipment. Also at level 40, you get a 20% chance to extract a basic mod when you break an item down. At 80 in your skill, you have a 10% chance to extract a rare mod. I am a score! I'll fix you right up! Sorry! Now that we have some parts, it's time to repair. And once again, there's two different ways to do this. From the workbench or the player's inventory. First, let's look at the workbench. If we choose a weapon that needs to be repaired, in the information area on the right hand side of the menu, we can see a list of things that are going to happen once we do this. We'll see the name or the type of weapon. We'll see the amount of durability loss, what it'll be if we repair it. We'll also be able to see how much damage the weapon's doing because of the loss of the durability. Also, the green number will show what the weapon will go back to once we repair it. Also, a little lower down in the information area, we can see how many parts it'll take to repair it, how many we have, how many we'll have after we complete this action. One thing I really enjoy about using the workbench to repair my items, and that is this area right here. Depending upon how badly damaged our items are, this first number will show us the amount of damage or armor loss compared to what it would be if it was fully repaired, which once again is that green number. This gives me a great sense of the amount of loss of damage or armor rating because of how badly damaged the items are. Now, you don't get this if you repair in your inventory. It's only available here at the workbench. If you repair your items at a workbench, there is no restrictions. It doesn't matter what your skill is in engineering or what level you are. But that's not the case if you're going to repair from your inventory. To use your inventory to repair items, you will need a minimum of 20 skill points in engineering. This will unlock field repair. Now there are a couple of ways that you can repair your items in your inventory. The first way is to choose this action. Press and hold until the drop box pops up. By doing this, you will repair all of your equipped weapons and equipped armor. It does not repair anything else in your inventory. When the drop box pops up, you can see how many parts it takes to repair the weapons and the armor. This is a quick and easy way to repair everything in your inventory that's equipped so you can get back to kicking ass as quick as possible. The second way that you can repair is by choosing an item that needs some love and then pressing this action. When you do that, a wheel will pop up that has four different options. The first option to the right is the repair option. If you click on this, it'll repair that individual object by itself. This option on the top of the wheel is for equipping or unequipping items. This option on the left side of the wheel is for swapping or dropping items on the ground. 
And the final option on the bottom of our wheel is breakdown. If you choose this option, it will break this item into parts. You can use it to do any of the items in your inventory, whether they're equipped or not. Now, if we choose the repair option, a pop-up will appear, once again showing us how many parts it'll take to repair the item and how many parts that we have. Hey, Captain. I got a thing I want to ask you. It's kind of big. Tinkering is pretty easy to understand, so we're not going to really spend a lot of time here. But if you do tinker with any of your items, there are three things that you can expect to happen. First of all, when you tinker with an item, it will increase by one level every time you do it. The second thing is, every time you tinker with an item and it increases in level, the damage or the armor rating of that item will increase as well. The final third thing that you can expect to happen if you're tinkering is to go broke. The more you tinker with an item and increase its level, the more costly that it becomes. And depending upon how many bits you have, you're probably not going to get more than seven or eight levels out of an item before you're broke. Here we can see that if we tinker with this weapon one more time, it's going to cost us over 24,000 bits to do it. I recommend to not really tinker a whole lot in the beginning part of the game. This would probably be something you would more want to do as you got higher in levels, say closer to level 30. Now there is one final thing to know about tinkering and that is you cannot tinker an item more than five levels above your current level. If you want to, you're going to have to level up and then you could tinker it up one more time. Here I've got a level 21 weapon. I'm level 20. We're going to tinker with it four times. You can see it's not too badly expensive because it is a higher level weapon, but once we get it up to 25, we now get a little pop-up over in the information side of the menu saying that's as far as we can go with that weapon. Once again, to go any higher with it, we would need to level up to continue tinkering with it. I've got this! Here's a little trick I learned in prison! A mod is an item that can be added to weapons or armor to increase their stats. There are two different quality types of mods, a basic mod and a rare mod. Mods only come in three categories, melee, ranged, and armor. I'll use the sort option, ranged, melee, and armor, so we can see these three categories better. In our skills tab, under ranged, we have handguns, long guns, and heavy weapons. So, ranged mods can be used on any weapon in that category. Same can be said for melee. Those mods can be used in both one-handed and two-handed weapons. Of course, this is the same for armor mods. Each of the three mod categories has two, three, or four mod types. For example, range mods only have three mod types. The first one is barrels. You can tell this by the graphic on the mod as well as here on the drop box. The second mod type is magazines. And once again, you can tell by the graphic on the mod and in the drop box. The third and final mod type for ranged weapons is sights. Once again, you can tell because you can see it on the graphic and in the drop box. Melee weapons only have two different mod types. The first mod type is called attack. It's basically where you would switch your blade out for different types of damage. The second mod type is called grip. Now, armor is a little more generous. It actually has four different mod types, starting with armor plating, the second is gadget, the third mod type is called skill, and the fourth is utility. Mods can be found in containers, dead enemies, and generally lying around all over in the open world. 
Also, like I said earlier, if you have your engineering skill up high enough, you can extract basic mods and rare mods by breaking weapons and armor down. Most mods are basic mods, but the way you can tell if you have a rare mod or not is by the little diamond icon that's on the right side of the mod. It's like the pristine diamond on weapons and armor. Since we learned a lot about mod types, let's see where to install the different mod types on any item that might need to be modded. If you notice right here, we can see the same graphics as the ones that were on each of the mods. Here is the barrel. Next is the clip. And the last is the sights. You can scroll through these options by clicking here or here. It works the same way for melee, starting with attack. The second one is grip. Next, with armor, the first one is armor plating. The second is gadget. The third is skill. And the fourth is utility. Okay, let's put some mods on this rifle, and we'll start with the barrel. But before we do that, there's something else that we need to know. The next thing to know is that there can be several mod styles in a mod type. Here we can see that I have three mod styles under one mod type, which is the barrel. Also, just because we have three doesn't mean that any one of these mods will make this weapon perform better. One mod type might be better on one style of weapon, let's say machine gun, while that same mod applied to another style of weapon, let's say rifle, may actually hurt its performance. So it's important to use the info box on the side of this menu. Here we can see the pluses and the negatives to whichever mod that we're looking at. Here we can see this mod improves the rate of fire by 15%. This is a semi-automatic weapon, so that mod would be useless on this weapon. Now this mod that we're looking at is to make our weapon more quieter. So firing noise minus 66.6%. .6%. We're not going to use it as a sniper rifle. So once again, this mod would not be a very good mod for this weapon. Even though the numbers over on the right hand side are showing green as a plus, they're still not going to be great mods for this style of weapon. Actually, the best one to choose would be the first one, which is critical damage plus 25%. Because this weapon is plasma based, with that we're going to get quite a bit of a jump in damage. And if we look over on the right hand side, you can see that it increases critical damage by 32.5% for a total of 195%. Now, don't get me wrong, this rifle could be turned into a sniper rifle. If you use the Whisper Quiet Muzzler, put that on as your barrel, which, remember, gives us minus 66.6% .6 firing noise, and we added a long scope to it, it could actually be turned into a sniper rifle. But I think there are other rifles that are better suited and do more damage for being a sniper. My style of play that I do is mid-range to close up, so therefore that's why I think the fun times barrel, which does plus 25% more critical damage, is better for me and the way that I play. This is what's really nice about modding your items. Depending upon how you play is how you can mod these items to get the most out of them and be the most OP. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the fun time barrel that gives me more critical damage. All right, now one other thing to keep in mind is anytime you apply a mod to any of your items, you can no longer get that mod back. It's gone forever. So be very choosy which mods that you install because if you put a very good mod on a weapon 
and it doesn't work good with that weapon, you can't get it back. You're going to have to go find it again. Okay, the next mod type that we're going to do will be the clip. And you can see that I've got four different clip styles in this mod type. The first one is called the Magnum. The magazine size is plus 50%. We can look over in the information box on the right and we can see all the pluses that we'll get if we chose this mod. The next mod is the Mag 2 Power. It changes the damage over to plasma. Now this is a plasma weapon. So if we actually added that mod to this slot, we wouldn't get anything out of it. It would be a waste of a mod because the weapon's already plasma. The next is the Mag 2 Zap. We would change our damage from Plasma over to Shock. And the final one is Mag 2 Melt. We would change our Plasma damage over to Corrosive. Now the important thing to notice here is the last two mods that we looked at, there was a lot of negatives over there in our information box. So by choosing one of these mods, we'd actually be hurting the performance or the damage or the fire rate or everything, actually, by choosing these mods. So for my style of play, the best mod to choose here is the first one, the Mag Num. Magazine size increased by 50%. Hey, the more ammo you can fire without reloading, the more damage you can do. Okay, the final mod type for this weapon is the sights. Now this is pretty straight up how it works, but there is a couple of things you might want to know. First of all, I've got three mod styles for this mod type. The first one is the Super Scoper 2000. Applies a six times zoom scope to the weapon. And as you can see in the information box on the right hand side, there's really no jump in any performance of this weapon. The next one that I have is the Extendo Sight. It's a two times scope that also extends the weapon's maximum range. The range is extended by 25%. But if we notice over in the right hand information box, there's actually an effective range. Now what's that, what that kind of means is you might be able to see farther than the weapon actually shoots. So for the bullet or the damage to be the most optimal, the enemy has to be within that range. You still might hit them farther than that, but it won't do as much damage as it would have if they were closer. And the final one that I've got is the gyro sight. This one increases weapon accuracy by 20%, or minus, the weapon spread by minus 20%. This would not be a good sight for this weapon, but it would be a great sight if we were to put it on a machine gun, because they're kind of all over the place. So that sight's not good. The first sight, the Super Scoper 2000, isn't good. The one that I would probably choose for this weapon would be the Extendo Sight. Get a little more range and be able to see a little bit farther as well. This is going to be fun. Heads up, jackass! Sometimes violence is the only way. Since this video has taken quite a bit longer than I'd anticipated it to be, I've decided not to show how to mod any of the armor. I'm sure by now you know how to do it, you know what to look for, and you'll be able to get the best mods onto your armor for the best results. So what we're going to do instead is pro tips. And I've got two. The first tip is kind of a continuation of modding. Some weapons and armor that you'll find will already have a mod or two on it. So if you find an item that you really like and it has a crappy stat on it that just doesn't work for your style of gameplay, always check to see if it's a mod. If it is, then replace it with a different mod that suits your tastes and the way you play. But once again, remember, if you use a mod, it's gone forever. Doesn't matter what you do, you cannot get that mod back. You will find quite a few mods while you're playing in the game but there's really not 
all that many. You'll find a lot of repeats of mods that you already have. So if you have a rare mod or something like that, you know, just be very careful. Always take your time and be very choosy on where and what you put the mod on. My second tip is about playing as a melee character. When I first started playing Outer Worlds, I wanted to be a melee slash heavy weapons build. It worked out great at the start of the game, but as I increased in levels and the enemies got harder, I found it very difficult to kill the enemies in a timely manner. Because I couldn't kill them quick enough, I found myself healing way too much or even dying over and over again. And no matter what kind of mod I used on my weapons, how much I tinkered with the weapon to increase its level and damage, it just didn't work out. Since then, I've done a ton of testing, and I finally found out what I was doing wrong, and it really does make a huge difference. As you may already know, a melee weapon can be swung one, two, or three times in a combo move, and then it needs a split second to reset. Also, you may already know that there is a power attack that you can do if you hold the attack button or the trigger in for a split second before you release it. But what I didn't know was there is a sweep attack as well, and this is how it works. If you hold the trigger for about one second, you will initiate the sweep attack. So if you start with a regular attack and hold the trigger for about a second during the first swing, you'll initiate a two-swing combo using the sweep attack. Now, if we add a power attack to this two-swing combo, it does a crazy amount of damage. To add in the power attack during the sweep attack, hold the trigger for about two seconds. It'll take a lot of practice, but if it's done correctly, this is what it looks like. There you go. That is the three swing combo using a regular swing, a sweep swing, and a power attack. We all in one piece? And there we go, ladies and gents. By using the two and three swing combos, we tore through those cannons like butter. And one of them was even an alpha. Plus, I'm not even really spec for melee. With buffs, I'm only at 42. I do apologize on how long this video turned out to be. If you stayed to the end, you truly are amazing. Also, I'd like to invite you to join us on our nightly streams of Outer Worlds. Also, keep an eye out on this channel because there's a lot more useless videos like this one coming out soon. Thanks for stopping in, and just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace. Bye.